Hello everybody, welcome to Unit 4 Biology Area Study 1. Today we'll be looking at responding to antigens. This particular video will look at the first and second line of defense um, and the video posted after this will look at the lymphatic system and the third line of defense. So today the dot points that we are focusing on are our barriers to prevent infection. We'll be looking at the innate immune response and we'll be looking at antigen presentation, self and non-self antigens and the cellular and non-cellular pathogens and allergens. So we'll make a start by talking about pathogens. So pathogens are basically anything that can cause infection or disease. Okay, so um, anything that's, you know, called a pathogenic microbe might be something that can cause disease, whether it be bacterial, fungal or viral. It does have to gain entry into the body first. Um, overcome the defense mechanisms that our body may have, become established, and be able to multiply. And they can do this to then cause harm to the host and produce the symptoms of disease or infection. So we can split pathogens as cellular and non-cellular. Okay, so cellular pathogens, things like bacteria, fungi, and protozoa. And non-cellular pathogens are things like DNA or RNA viruses, viroids, or prions. So these are some types of pathogens that you may have heard of. Ones that are probably more common to hear about, bacteria, so things like E. coli. Um, they replicate via binary fission. And um, viruses, okay, they need a host to replicate and prions they're just misfolded proteins as well all right an antigen an antigen is basically like a label okay so they are made of mostly proteins okay some can be polysaccharides some can be lipids some are nucleic acids but most are proteins and they basically surround the actual pathogen um, and they surround cells we can use antigens to identify between what we call self and non -self. So if our body recognizes an antigen as self, it's not gonna create a, a response to it, but if it's non-self, that is when our defense mechanisms may come through. So if it is identified as non-self, okay, our body might react to eliminate them. Um, whereas we can also end up recognizing our own cells um, as self and not react against them as well. If that process fails, however, and the body starts to attack its own cells, um, then we can call that autoimmune diseases, which we'll talk about soon as well. So in terms of self antigens, we've got um, two classes that we look at. We look at MHC1, um, which are expressed on all nucleated cells in the body. And we've got MHC2 proteins, which are found on specialized cells of the immune system. It's just some important information for us to understand before we think about the actual immune response. If we look at the immune response though, we have sort of three lines of defense that you may have been introduced to. So the first line of defense is looking at our physical, chemical and microbiological barriers that are gonna protect our body from any unwanted materials from entering. Um, in animals, this could be things like having intact skin. It could be things like mucus, tears, saliva, stomach acid, bacteria, um, that's good bacteria in our guts. Um, and in plants, it could be things like having physical barriers like a waxy cuticle, stomatal closure, cell walls, um, some chemical barriers like antifungals and antimicrobials that are produced. Um, and then active defenses, things like um, recognition systems for the pathogen and the hypersensitivity. So plants might release specific enzymes that activate death in the um, pathogen. So the big thing to understand is probably just examples of physical, chemical and microbiological. And this diagram pretty much sums up what they could be as well. And understanding that if a pathogen is able to bypass this first line of defense, that we would have another line of defense to kick in. That is what we call our second line of defense. So we call this line our innate or our non-specific immune response. And this is basically because regardless of what the pathogen is, regardless of what the infection is, our body is gonna have this same response, okay? 
it includes the first and second lines of defense um, and there's no memory of prior infection so regardless of whether we've been infected by this pathogen before our body is still going to have that same response so basically kicks in after the microbe has entered um, it will react to the presence of any pathogen regardless of what it is and the big picture that we're looking at here is different types of white blood cells that are going to be involved in this response so um, it's made up of a number of parts uh, the big sort of main uh, defense mechanism that we talk about here is um, a phagocyte um, undergoing the process of phagocytosis so a phagocyte is basically engulfing or absorbing um, the bacteria and it does this through the process of phagocytosis which you can see here so in terms of phagocytosis the phagocyte is able to detect the microbe it then ingests it it will form what we call a phagosome okay which is sort of like a phagocytic vesicle that's formed um, that encloses the microbe in a specific membrane which you can see here and this fuses with a lysosome okay that lysosome has digestive enzymes um, that will start to break that down so digestion will occur where that microbe is broken down and then that will be discharged um, other white blood cells that are important we have macrophages which are basically large phagocytes we have neutrophils which are small phagocytes and they're the first to arrive at the site of infection they release a special chemical which we call cytokines it's a signaling molecule um, that will attract more white blood cells to the area as well we have mast cells and they release what we call histamine in the allergic response we have dendritic cells which are a type of messenger cells don't get this confused with um, dendrites of neurons because that's a little bit different um, we also have complement proteins and they're basically a group, group of blood proteins that help the phagocyte recognize any foreign antigens as well and they stick to those invading microorganisms to make them more visible to phagocytes cytokines like i mentioned is the signaling molecule that might be released we've also got eosinophils which move to the inflamed area we've got natural killer cells which bind to specific tumor cells or virally infected cells and they can kill them and we've got interferons which also signal um are a signal protein that are released by a host cell in response to a virus or a pathogen as well and finally a big part of the innate immune response is inflammation so inflammation is basically when an immune response is initiated by a physical chemical or microbial agent so not necessarily a pathogen but it's characterized by four symptoms and that is pain redness heat and swelling so the inflammatory response basically aims to destroy the cause of infection okay so it will remove any remnants from the body um, and eliminate the damage it does this by confining the infection to a small area to limit the damage that can be caused um, and to replace or repair the tissue damaged by the infection um, and also improving blood flow so we can see here in this diagram we've got bacteria that has entered perhaps on a knife um, a wound whatever it may be um, blood clots will begin to form and then chemicals like histamine or prostaglandins will be released by the damaged cells um, and this will attract the phagocytes to the infection our blood vessels will then increase in their diameter so if they're wider they will allow for more blood flow um, to that area and allow the defensive substances to leak into tissue spaces as well the phagocyte will then reach that damaged area um, and it will squeeze between the cells to enter the region and destroy those invading microbes so they'll undergo that process of phagocytosis and then an abscess may form okay after a few days and this is basically just the collection of dead phagocytes and damaged tissue and that might be excreted as pus it's a little bit of a summary of the first two lines of defense come back for the next video where we'll go over um, the lymphatic system and the third line of response or the adaptive immune response as well if you've got any comments leave them below and i'm happy to answer any questions there is also a immune response video that was posted with the previous study design so if you scroll down on my channel you can see um, another summary as well that's a little bit more detailed
All right. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye.